together in paperwork. It is now 7 p.m. I call out to order the East Point City Council regular meeting on Tuesday, September 15, 2020 at 7 p.m. We will start with the invocation led by our Mayor Pro Tem, Sarah Lucido, continue with the Pledge of Allegiance. Lucido. Dear God, we ask for your guidance as we undertake the business of the City of East Point. As we thank you for the many blessings you have given us, Help us to lead our community with patience, tolerance, and understanding. We ask that you direct us to do what is best for all of our residents. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Tonight we will be doing a proclamation based upon Constitution Week, and I will be reading that proclamation. City of East Point Proclamation Constitution Week is September 17th through the 23rd, 2020. Whereas it is the privilege and duty of all Americans to commemorate the 231st anniversary of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America with appropriate ceremonies and activities. And whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuance of proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17th through 23rd as Constitution Week. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Mayor Monique Owens, of the City of East Point and the City Council do hereby proclaim that September 17th through 23rd, 2020, urge all citizens to study the Constitution and reflect on the privilege of being an American with all rights and responsibilities which that privilege involves. In witness whereof, we have Hereunto set our hand and cause the seal of the city of East Point to be affixed this 15th day of September 2020. Moving right along. Please call the roll. Mayor Owens. Here. Councilperson Baker. Here. Councilperson Curley. Here. Councilperson DeMonico. Here. Councilperson Lucido. Here. Excellent. Next is the approval of the agenda. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to approve the agenda. Report. Uh, I think we've got a couple couple extra items. Um, are you talking about with the grant that Mr. Fairbrother uh, emailed us, Mr. DeMonico, a councilman? Yes, that would be one and then uh, attorney-client privilege communication addition. Okay, I think that for the closed session, I think that was already on here. So you want to make that? Um, uh, go ahead, sir. Oh, sure. Uh, Sarah, if um wouldn't mind uh, amending your motion yes, to yeah, add the grant for election administration, and then it's an additional closed session item to, to the two that are um, on the agenda. It would be um, well, I guess Mr. Albright, what should the, uh, what should it's, we it's, say for that one? Council member uh, DeMonico, it's, uh, it's a legal opinion from uh, Labor Council uh, Brandon Fournier. Uh, Mr. Fournier is not going to be appearing uh, for the closed session via Zoom. 
uh, but he does have uh, a letter that he has submitted and that will be uh, the topic of discussion for purposes of the closed uh, session. It's uh, based on attorney-client privilege communication. Okay, yeah, those two items. I'll, I'll motion to amend my, um, well, I'll amend my motion to add those two items. And I'll still support. Move and support. Thank you, Councilman DeMonaco. Please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonaco? Yes. Next, we will be opening the first part of the hearing of the public. Each resident gets three minutes in addition to another three minutes at the second part of the hearing of the public before the close of the meeting. We ask you to address all of council and be respectful at, and talk to council as you will want someone to talk to you. Um, we will now be opening the hearing of the public. Please state your name and residency, please, Mr. Fairbrother. Yes, ma'am. Anyone who wishes to speak, if they could please raise their electronic hand on Zoom. Um, Madam Mayor, I see that Mandy would like to speak. Mandy, okay. if you can hear us, the floor is now yours. Good evening, Council. Um, I attend every meeting, and I'm at the last Council meeting, um, I believe that um, Ms. Monique said that there was an event at Foot Locker on Thursday, September the 10th, and it was for all residents of East Point to attend. And um, she was going to speak about the rank choice voting and or the DOJ to the people that attended. So I attended the meeting and I was recording the event and people were giving away things like Fred Miller, Blessing Hands, Foot Locker, 107.5 was there. And I no, 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 noticed that Monique uh, uh, appeared about 435 to 445, which I had been Stop there. Stop you right now. I said address all of council and you're making it personal. So I'm going to end it with you, Mr. Fairbrother. Let's continue with the next person online. We want to be respectful. <laughs> it was your event. Let's continue with the next person. Oh, childish. I, Madam Mayor, I think this so far has been respectful though. She was just mentioning. In well, I ask her to not address, to address all of council, Councilman DeMonaco. It was and your event. That. It was your event that I was speaking on. May I continue? Madam, Madam Mayor. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> uh, yes. Um, I would, I would refer to Mr. Albright uh, on this matter. Madam Mayor, as long as the speaker is directing uh, the council as a whole, as uh, rather than a personal attack directed just at the council member or the mayor, uh, they can speak on that on that topic if they're speaking in about a, a particular event. As long as they're addressing the council as a whole, is that what you're doing, Miss Mandy? I'm addressing the council as a whole, but it was your event that I was addressing. So I'm letting the council know that I attended your event. None of the other council people were there. And it was in the agenda as your event. No, I didn't have it on the agenda as my it event. It is on the agenda and in the, in, in read the last page of it when all the council members got to speak about what was going on in the city. You spoke that you were having an event at Foot Locker. Read the last page of the agenda. I'll wait for you to read. It's not on the agenda, but go ahead, Miss uh, Mandy. So at which time I was recording the whole event, um, she appeared between 4.30 and 4.45, and many uh, journalists were approaching her for about the event and the reason for it. And I was really happy that she finally appeared um, because I really wanted to know what was being said about the DOJ or ranked choice voting, because I do work the polls and you know i'm really concerned about my city and in the ranked choice voting um it's not easy to work these events with these people standing over you and um, i was asked by many security people that were there to stay away from the event person and um they kept approaching me 
telling me to drive my car through to get any items. I said, I wasn't there for that. I was there to hear the speech on ranked choice voting. And then approximately at 5.30 East Point police arrived and I was approached by them. They said they were there for me and they were called and um, Mayor Monique Owens called the officer out of the car and said I was intimidating her and disrupting the event, which was a public event. And I feel that was an abuse of power. Um, there was no reason for me to leave. I wasn't bothering nobody. I was standing over by a curb. Um, I was waiting for the speech to be given that was never given. And I was told to leave the event. Um, I have video of the whole event. I will give that to any council member, Mr. Albright, whoever wants to see it. But I was singled out in this event. There was no other East Point residents there that spoke about it. She did not speak about what the event was supposed to be about. And I think that was wrong. And if you go to any of the web pages, the neighborhood watch groups, these people are really upset that they were not notified because they don't come to these council meetings. So was this really an East Point event or was it a Detroit event or was it a photo op event? We don't know what this really was. And um, it needs to stop. I'm not gonna be singled out by any council person up there. I do nothing wrong, I support my city. We had a neighborhood watch group. We had police there, we had fire there. We had a council person that attended. We had a really nice time. There was no calling out of people, no security people saying escort this person off. And I was the only white person there besides Fred Miller. So I really am gonna say it's a little bit racial too that I was escorted off the property. And furthermore, I have investigated with an attorney and I was told that's Footlocker property that she could not tell them to have me escorted off because it was her event. Thank you for letting Three me speak. Three minutes is up, thank you. You know you're wrong. Thank you for coming to my event and continue to come. I appreciate you supporting the community. Um, anybody else that we have, Mr. Fairbrother? Madam Mayor, I see no other hands raised and no other comments in the chat box. So I believe it's now safe to close the floor. Okay, the first um, hearing of the public is closed. Ms. Mandy, if you would like to speak the second time, um, you have that chance. Thank you so much for continuously supporting me in the city of East Point. I'm Next, we have the United approval um, of minutes. Council? Madam, Madam Mayor? Yes. Yes, sir. Councilman? Yes. Curly, yes. Uh, I would, um, I would uh, move to approve the minutes of the September 1st, 2020 regular meeting. Port. Move and support it. Please call the roll. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Lacido? Yes. <clears throat> Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. The next item is scheduled hearings. There are no scheduled hearings. And next item is unfinished business. And we will be talking about approval to lease a four-wheel Elgin Whirlwind vacuum street sweeper. Do we have um, our public... Um, Director uh, Mr. Abraham on the line to talk about this or Mr. Blum? Well, Mayor, uh, can I make a comment before the, uh, before they start? Yes, please, Councilman. Um, I guess for, for myself, I don't have anything uh, different or I don't uh, need any additional information. I just, I don't know what the rest of Council thinks, but I'd, I'd just like to go forward to just go out to bid on this. Um, I think it's a great idea. We definitely, it's a good to, to do so. And uh, Ms. Lucido has mentioned that we, you know, if the bids are higher than what Mr. Abraham's brought forward, then we just go with uh, what Mr. Abraham brought forward. So I don't know what everyone else thought on that. Madam Mayor? Yes. I, I agree with Mr. DeMonico. I've reviewed everything and um, I've also spoken with um, Mr. Fairbrother in regards to this um, mm -hmm. before the meeting. So I'm, I'm okay with making a motion at this time also. Madam, okay, um, I want the Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. How you doing tonight? Good evening, Madam Mayor. Respected Madam Council. Mayor, Ma point of order, Madam Mayor. Oh, I, oh Council I, Mayor I, Curley. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I agree with the other two council members. I'm I'm ready to move uh, uh, with a motion. Uh, although I appreciate uh, 
I think we got enough, I got enough information, I think everybody else did, to not to go over the whole thing again. So I agree with the other two council members. Let's, mo let's move on with the motion and... Uh, um, I didn't, I actually want to know about the leasing. And Mr. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me, uh, Mr. Abraham. Is Mr. Blum on here? Our finance director? Yes, Madam Mayor, I'm here. How you doing tonight, sir? Good, um, how are you? I, uh, I'm good, thank you. I know we talked about, well, I didn't get to talk to you about it, about the leasing. And I want to know, was it better to write out, buy it out, than lease it? Um, we, we had references last time it came up, and the motor pool is a separate independent fund, and it does not have enough cash to outright buy it on its own. Uh, okay. We had talked about the possibility of setting up a loan from general fund to the motor pool uh, versus leasing it, but uh, one way or the other, the motor pool will have to finance this uh, particular piece of equipment. So if the motor pool, you say we can get borrow the money from the motor pool? Is that what you said? We, we could uh, set up a loan from the general fund to the motor pool. They basically would borrow money from the general fund, use that to buy the equipment, and then pay it back over a period of years, whatever we establish. Um, so, you know, that, that would be a financing alternative, but the motor pool itself would have to finance this purchase. Okay, so if, the motor, if we borrow from the motor pool, would it be cheaper for us to borrow from that, the actual, this, um, this uh, national intergovernment, I'm sorry, not that one, but is it the National Bank, TCF Bank, would it be cheaper for us to do it in-house than with someone else? Uh, we, we could set up a lower interest rate and it would still earn the general fund uh, more money than I can invest it at right now because the rates are so low. So if we were gonna go ahead with a purchase, then I personally would recommend that the, uh, it be treated as a general fund loan and not as a lease. Okay, so what would you think would be better to borrow in-house and- Correct, yep, Okay. Bar borrowed in-house, yep. Okay, um, council, was your idea still the same as far as um, borrowing it from somebody else and getting a higher interest rate or borrowing it within the city's um, funding balance and um, saving more money. Yeah, I like the general fund motor pool idea. So, okay. Madam Mayor? Yes, sir. Please. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I have a chance to clarify a few additional things? I believe um, when this item was initially presented to the Honorable Council a month back, uh, Councilman uh, Mr. DiMonico was under the impression that this contract we are piggybacking on or it was advertised by a national IPA, which is a private organization. I want to give some additional clarification or few information to the Honorable Council, if you may allow me to do so. Um, you know what, I don't know if it's gonna be needed tonight, sir, due to the fact that, um, do you think it that information is a, in addition to more knowledge that we may need on, on our decision making or? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, well please, thank okay. you. Uh, first of all, in case we purchase this machine outright, it will cost us $276,313. And then if we lease it for an eight year period, we have to pay $36,267 dollars over an eight year period as interest. That is just for your information. Uh, first of all, going back to what I said earlier, this contract was awarded by City of Rochester Hills to Bell Equipment. City of Rochester Hills together with Farmington Hills, Bloomfield Township and Madison Heights prepared a request for quote and advertised it through Mitten. And it was, it was given to 150 participants or 150 different vendors all over the country. It was advertised through Mitten. And then a four, four member committee prepared the RFQ and then advertised it on September 1st of 2016 and received bids on October 26, 2016. 
So it was in the market for almost two months. And then City of Rochester Hills being the principal procuring agency or the lead agency uh, reviewed the bids in partnership with Farmington Hills, Bloomfield Township and Madison Heights. And then they received four proposal and a committee consisting of uh, knowledgeable people and then the vehicle management committee from these four cities evaluated the proposal and awarded the contract to Bell Equipment. So it was a contract prepared by uh, these four cities and then the contract was publicly advertised and then it was publicly awarded. The reason why uh, National IPA got involved with this one was City of Rochester Hills purchasing process and the qualification of their personnel were evaluated by National IPA and they accredited City of Rochester Hills being they have uh, knowledgeable people handling the process and they vetted their process and they accredited this contract to be worthy to be a contract under National IPA. Uh, we do not have an in-house expertise to develop the specification for an equipment like this, a walk home street sweeper, which we never purchased. And then we, are, we get under this national, under this contract awarded by city of Rochester Hills, we will get 18% discount on the chassis amounting to $18,843, 3% discount on the sweeper unit, which is $5,891, and a discount of $4,500 offered by Elgin, altogether we will save almost $40,000 in case we proceed with this one. In case we advertise this through MyDeal, or if we purchase this equipment through MyDeal, we, there is no contract available in MyDeal for a whole sweeper. The chassis is sold separately and the sweeper component is sold separately. So we have to award a contract to someone and then that contractor has to purchase the chassis and the sweeper and then fabricate it and it will take about eight months uh, to fabricate and deliver the sweeper. Whereas in case we proceed with this contract, we can get the sweeper within a month. And then again, if we work and then advertise or award the contract through MyDeal, we will end up in paying almost $40,000 more. The, there are eight government agencies who bought sweeper units or sweepers under the same contract awarded by City of Rochester Hills. That is, Rochester Hills bought a unit in 2017, Farmington Hills bought one in 2018, Bloomfield Township bought one in 2017, Madison Heights bought one in 2017, Auburn Hills bought a unit in 2017, Roseville bought a unit in 2018, Sterling Heights bought one in 2017, and Wayne County bought seven sweepers in 2019. Ironically, the unit that Roseville purchased in 2018, they paid $268,000 even even then, they did not get an attachment called wandering hose. That alone cost $10,760. So now we are paying $276,000 in case this contract is approved. And that is within or within or below what Roseville paid in 2018. And then the- Can you send us this? information i mean i this is the first i've heard i think everything you just said well no, most of i did i did i did send this to our city manager and then i was under the impression that uh, she shared with uh, all the council members uh, councilmen and then oh okay i, I have so not seen i it. can go pardon me uh, i did not receive it so um, i uh, mr uh, abraham i guess uh what Council is saying that some of this information, it seems like it's a little bit extensive and I guess we should have got it beforehand since it is um, assisting us in making better decisions. And I, I know that you say you sent it to the city manager. She probably was so busy and overwhelmed it passed her mind to send it to us. So um, 
Councilman DeMonaco, what was your suggestion? Because it sounded like you wanted to dissent before you make a, made a decision or? Yeah, I'd hate to, I mean, I think we're not in a hurry anyway, but I, I'd hate for this to show up on another agenda in a row, but I think that's probably the most appropriate then. I'd like to see this because if it was in fact out on Mitten and all these cities have bought it, then I think that's great, but I'd like to see all that beforehand. So I, I just motion then that we hopefully finally take uh, action on this next meeting then and table it till then. I'll support. Thank you, Mr. Abraham for um, coming in tonight. Um, we'll be looking forward to that um, extensive information and better helping us with making a decision. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Um, we have motion and support. Please call the roll. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Lacido? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Councilperson Harvey. Curley? Harvey, you're on uh, mute. Uh, yes. Uh, I think I heard a yes there. Councilperson yes, Baker? Did. Yes. And Mayor Owens. Yes, thank you. Next item is reports from administration, starting with our city manager, Ms. Doom. Good evening. Here, you're muted. Ms. Doom? Yes, I was muted. Here I am <laughs> talking away. Um, I, I try not to have the sound on so my paper ruffling doesn't disturb everyone. But uh, I would like to share for those um, who are listening tonight that we did have a water break on Rosalind between 10 and Stevens. So if you notice uh, our water's turned off, if it's back on, um, I haven't spoken with Mr. Abraham. So it, it may be cloudy for a while. We have heard from a few folks on uh, some of the local pages that they're, they've noticed a change in the water. So just be aware that we did have a water main break there this afternoon and I did notify all of council, but now I'd like to, you know, let the public know. Um, we're very successful so far with the resurfacing project, um, working on Roxana, uh, Holland Street, and now moving on to Stricker. Uh, Stricker is in a little poor, poorer condition than the other street, so it will need a little bit more work. Um, but that's, uh, you know, underway, and we're really looking forward to having those three streets done and possibly the fourth one. Um, as we said, we would be very cautious, uh, starting with two streets first, making sure that uh, we didn't have major cost overruns, and then moving on to the third and the fourth street. So we'll be keeping you updated, and we'll keep the community updated as we move forward. And I'd like to share with you, um, you know, we're getting really close to the end of the census. Uh, September 30th, uh, pretty much wrapping things up. And uh, we stand as of today, we've got 78.5% of our residents are reporting. Um, that's a good number, but it could be considerably better. Uh, the more folks who will take that five minutes to go online or fill out their census forms, that's more money for your libraries, for your schools, for your programs. That's $1,800 you're losing uh, for your community, whether uh, well, the, the streets I just mentioned, you know, we have funds coming in. Those are, those are funds that you've already paid taxes for. So by reaching out to the federal government, taking your census, you're actually getting the money back that you've paid, and we certainly don't want it to go to other cities. So although we're doing well, I did take a quick survey of surrounding communities, and most of them are, are have uh, low 80s all the way up to very high 80% of their communities reporting. So I just really want to impress upon everyone that um, it's great that they're having, some of our neighboring communities are having, you know, really high numbers of, of residents reporting but we have to catch up to them very, very quickly. We don't have much time because we do have an older city. We have uh, aging infrastructure and like every established community that's been around for a number of years, we need every federal dollar to be able to help our residents. Whether it's senior programs, whether it's helping people go to school, it, it's the, the list is endless of all the wonderful things that having those federal dollars come back to us will do for the community. So uh, this is my pitch tonight, and I will keep pitching all the way through September 30th, that it's very, very important if you haven't taken the time or if you know someone 
who's been a little hesitant about, you know, going online or has misplaced their form, um, we're, we're happy to help you in any way we can. We just need to get those numbers up so we get our fair share of federal dollars. And that's my report for tonight. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Doom, Council? Madam Mayor, if I may. Yes, ma'am. Um, Ms. Doom, is there any way we can put out maybe one more shout out on Facebook about the census? Um, that'll maybe give you know us an opportunity. We could all share it on our personal pages also to try to get that last minute push maybe. Right, I did, um, you know, I went, been going to the census site and just taking a look at, like I said, our other communities, uh, taking a look how the state's doing versus the rest of the country. And they do have quite a bit of information on there that I have been um, posting on our Facebook site. So today I posted a new, um, you know, kind of a blurb about the census and how it helps libraries. Um, before this week is over, I will post other areas that it's really going to help just to keep that awareness going and fresh on our Facebook page. Um, we'll also probably do a countdown for the last 10 days, letting people know we really need to get those numbers up a little bit higher to benefit our community. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great question, um, Mayor Pro Tem. Also, in addition to that, are we putting little notes about the census in the water bills? Mr. Blum, I'll turn that to him. Mr. Blum is actually next on the scene. So Mr. Blum, I'm gonna just go ahead and hand it to you <laughs> since you're next okay. to be uh, spoken to that evening. So we can roll right into that. Uh, yes, yeah, far as a uh, message on the water bill, by the time the next one goes out, the census will be closed. Okay. Uh, the bill won't hit till October 1st at the earliest. Okay. So there was no plan on putting a, a message on there. Okay, thank you. Um, if you're done with Miss Doom, um, I am. Okay, then I will so, move on. I had a couple questions, though. Okay, I, I'll uh, pause. Miss Doom. Oh, Miss Doom. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Domenico. Please. Sure. I guess the first one was about absentee ballots. Uh, could you let the public know when they should expect it to be mailed out? Absolutely. Uh, we have an anticipated date that we should be receiving those ballots on September 17th. Um, we do, of course, have to uh, by law send out the military absentee ballots first. And once they are processed and mailed out to our uh, folks who are away from home, then we will mail them to the community. And uh, that anticipated mailing date begins on September 24th. Awesome. And I, I was wondering if we had an update on the commercial Kelly properties. It's been over 45 days since we had that motion at the table here. What's uh, what's going on with those buildings? Let's see if Kim is on this. Kim, Kim is with us also. Would you like her to speak separately or have her step up now? She can step up um, now since we, okay. since we councilman um, brought up the subject. Good evening, Ms. Holman, how are you? Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, yes, we are negotiating the final terms of the purchase agreement and should have that finalized by the end of the week. Sounds good. Stay right there. Councilman DeMonaco, do you have any more questions for Ms. Holman while she's here? Uh, no, I think that sounds good. I'm glad we'll get that taken care of. Um, and I think I just have one more question then. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Holman. Uh, one more for Ms. Doom. I was curious, and I saw George had joined at some point, in case you didn't know the answer to this one. I was wondering what our policy is on no-knock warrants in the city. Um, I was curious if we could Talk about that for a second. Director, are you there? I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, good yes, evening, sir. how are you? The councilman had a question about, um, go ahead, um, councilman, so you can. Um, the, I, I, have the, I have the answer for that. Yeah, uh, the answer, okay. Um, just real quick, uh, typically we do not conduct no knock warrants. We follow the Michigan statute in regards to those. Um, the only time we would uh, conduct a no knock warrant, if we have reason to believe that somebody is armed in the residence. That's probably the number one reason. But, uh, you know, I've been in this business a long time. I think we've only executed one no-knock warrant in probably a decade. It's not a, it's not a common practice to do that. And if you do conduct a no-knock warrant, you have to list that in the affidavit, the reasons for that, and the judge or magistrate decides whether or not they're going to approve that. 
Is that similar in the, I mean, probably most of the examples, I guess, I've seen nationwide were not in Michigan. It's probably different, different law in different states then, or is that? Yes, uh, okay. the, it, the, the law varies in different states, but I'm just telling you from a law enforcement uh, person of many years, it's not a common practice in Michigan to execute a no-knock no uh, search warrant. And again, you have to list the reasons in the affidavit that has to be approved by the judge or magistrate. Yeah. It's very specific reasons why you would not knock. Okay. Um, yeah, appreciate that. No problem. Thank you. Any other questions, um, Councilman? Uh, that'd be all. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to um, the finance director, Mr. Blum. Okay, Madam Mayor Council. Um, I just want to get you updated that uh, the audit will begin on Monday, September 28th. Uh, it will be uh, all virtual, which ought to be interesting. I'm going to be doing a lot of scanning and emailing. Uh, they will be contacting, if they have not already, uh, the mayor and one or two council members uh, prior to the start of the audit. So if, if they have not contacted you, uh, be prepared. Um, and that's all I have. Uh, I've got enough on the agenda later. So unless you guys have questions, I'm done. Any questions, Council? Saying uh, we're going to go to our city attorney, Mr. Albright. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, Members of Council. Um, uh, members of Council, all of, my, all of my comments this evening relate to uh, the closed session uh, this evening. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, unrelated to the closed session that the council members may have at this time. Council, any questions for our city attorney at this time? Thank you. Um, thank you're you gonna go right, it. I'm sorry. Oh, I said thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Next item is new business. We're gonna do the introduction and first reading of ordinance number 1201, article 27. Council? Madam Mayor? Yes, sir, Councilman Crow. Thank you, I would, uh, I would move to introduce and give first reading to ordinance number 1201, which would amend chapter 50, zoning article 17, supplemental regulations, section 50 162, exterior lighting regarding stream and or rope lighting, and schedule the ordinance for second reading and consideration for adoption at the City Council regular meeting on October 6, 2020. Support. Moved and support. Any questions on this? Was uh, any. Well, I was just going to mention, I guess as a uh, liaison to planning, I was wondering if we were saying anything about that. It's, it is pretty straightforward, but uh, the planning commission was calling it the Yulinski ordinance uh, for our planning commissioner that brought it up. But uh, I think it, it makes sense. And um, obviously the whole planning commission did as you saw. I guess my only question, um, if I'm not mistaken, was telling residents that they can't put string lights around their uh, on their property, as far as their um, their windows and things like that, is telling them what they can and can't do with their own property. Uh, Ms. Doom? Yes, ma'am. Am I reading that right? Yes, you are. Restricting um, residents on how to decorate their house? Uh, businesses. No. Business. Business. Businesses? Okay, businesses. I thought I said homes, too. Okay. So I never want to uh, do that. Okay, Council, you want to move forward with this? I have a motion. Support. Please call the roll. Council Member Curley? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Council Member Baker? Yes. And Mayor Owens? Yes. Next item is the introduction and first reading of ordinance number 12002, amend chapter 50 zoning. Council? Sure. Madam Mayor. Well, go ahead. Councilman Crowley. Thank you. I would move to introduce and give first ready to ordinance number 1202, amend chapter 50, zoning article 17, signs section 50 184, prohibited signs, string and or rope lighting, and schedule the ordinance for second reading and consideration for adoption at the City Council regular meeting on October 6, 2020. Support. Moving to support. Any conversation on this? Uh, just, just one question, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, sir. Uh, 
maybe somebody can answer from, from the administration. Will the, does the planning commission now have a copy or will they have a copy of both or, of these ordinances? So they'll have it for their record? Ms. Jones? Yeah, I, I, that's a good question. Um, I've never been asked that question before. I assume that we always have copies available for people, but Council Member Curley is asking if there's one that is going to be given to each of the members. We certainly can do that. Yeah, I think that um, would be, I think that would be good. They, they were, they have, they were 50, 50 part of this, this, this whole thing. So I think they ought to know what they actually recommended. You know, Mr. Curley, they, they all have copies of it. They, they reviewed it and Mr. DeHaan's showing us his copy right now, actually. They have copies, right. <laughs> they probably had it before I had it. <laughs> yeah. All right, we had a motion in support. Let's move on. Um, please call the roll. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes, next item. At Item is approval of special land used for Drew's Garden. Madam Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I'll make a motion to approve special land use as recommended by the Planning Commission on September 3rd, 2020 for Drew's Garden located at 23751 Gratiot, property ID number 2-14-30-401-007 to expand the retail sales of plant materials, produce, and gourmet items to be located in a permanent 40 by 20 foot tent and in accordance with the approved site plan dated August 27th, 2020. Support. Madam no, Mayor. Sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, it's Mary Van Heeren. If I could just- How are you doing tonight? <laughs> Thank you, very good. Yes, ma'am. I could just ask Ms. Lucido if she would consider modifying that ordinance to include that the site plan will comply with fire code requirements. I will amend um, my motion to include that. I still support. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you for attending tonight's meeting as well. Moving and support it. Please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Next item, approval of cost to apply for transportation grant. Madam Mayor, I will motion to approve the proposal for McKenna and Associates to prepare and apply for a grant from SUMCOG for the Planning Assistance Program for Transportation and Quality at the cost of $900. Support. Any conversation on this? Moved and supported, please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Next item is the bid award for the fire station rear parking lot. We have our fire director, um, Nick Sage. I don't know if you wanna, if council is ready to move forward with this, if you'd like to say anything at this time. Thank you, I'm Madam Mayor. I, I really have nothing to add at this point on that. But you thank have any you. Questions? Thank you for attending tonight's meeting. Do we have any questions um, for him tonight, council? No. If not, sure. let's. Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion if you're ready. Yes, ma'am. A motion to award the contract for the fire station rear parking lot to Matelli Cement Company, LLC, at the cost of $76,570 with a 5% contingency. Support. Moved and supported. Please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes, next item is the bid award for the rock salt. We have our director, Mr. Abraham. If anybody has any questions for him concerning this. Madam Mayor, I will make a motion if you're ready. Yes, ma'am. Madam Mayor, I motion to award contract to purchase up to 26,000 tons of road salt from Detroit Salt Company at the cost of $48.65 per ton for an amount of not to exceed $126,490. I'll support. Okay. And Mr. Baker supports too. <laughs> I, I did just have a quick question, not for Mr. Abraham, but more for Mr. Blum, just in general. I was wondering, um, we have the line item. I was wondering if when we mention which funds are budgeted, if we could put the amounts with them too in the future, because 
we do all of the line items, but I know we've changed some. And sometimes I'm not 100% sure if I have the latest. Uh, so I think that'd just be helpful um, for future purchases. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I think we have that. Did we um, get a roll call on that? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Can you, um, we do, we have motion and support. Can you please call the roll, sir? Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. And Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. The next item is the request by the East Point Advocates supporting equality for a space to erect a sculpture at Kennedy Park. Council? Madam Mayor, if, you, if I may, can I start by introducing this because they have already come to the Parks Commission. Sure, and I know you've been liaison on that, so I'll let you have the floor. So um, this group did come to the Parks, uh, two Parks Commission meetings, so two months ago, and they proposed um, to, they want to put a statue talking about, um, like representing all the residents in the city of East Point. Um, I think they still have a lot of work to go. I wanted to put this information in the packet tonight for everyone to review because I know there's a lot of questions and I'm sure there's going to be other concerns also regarding this. I do know there's some people on the meeting tonight that are part of this group. So maybe one of them might be interested in kind of speaking and sharing where their idea like started and is coming from. Anyone? Um out there for the who's a part of the East Point Advocates Supporting Equality group. Like yes. Hi, good yes, evening. Hi. hi, good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Well, first of all, thank you for putting this together because it's needed, especially at this time of uh, systemic racism and so many protests. So I thank you um, for that. Oh. Please speak at this moment. Um, my name's Shelly Chapa, and I'm here to represent the members of EASE. Um, EASE is an acronym for East Point Advocates Supporting Equality. The national stage and political, political climate lately have been filled with division, um, inequality, systemic racism, violence and destruction. Our group was formed because of our love for East Point and our desire to bring our fellow citizens together instead of all of this division. Um, EASE is, is actually composed of six, a six person steering committee and an at large subcommittee of associate members that is going to continue to grow. Um, and there are several other people involved that don't want to be on the face of it, but they're backing us right now. Um, our committee right now is perfectly balanced between varying age groups, ethnic background, religious backgrounds, political viewpoints. Uh, collectively, our steering committee alone represents over 180 years of East Point residents. Um, our goal is really simple. We just wish to stoke the fire of community love and to show the world that those in our city that believe in peace, equality, diversity, and unity. Um, in the following presentation that, that you have in hand right now, uh, you'll see a bold undertaking that we do wish to assume. One of the more important things to note is the undertaking is that we will not allow this to become anything more than a symbol of unity in our community. Our team will develop a plan and from top to bottom, um, this will be a project for the citizens and by the citizens and it will be driven by the citizens and we don't want it to become a vehicle for political, private, business, or religious promotion, but we are going to hope that we get support from that, that segment. Thank you. Again, thank you for putting this together because it's so needed. And we just did the mural um, at the Children's Garden, which promotes exactly what you're talking about. So to have, you know, a sculpture, you know, in addition to that, that would be awesome. Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to the Mayor Pro Tem because again, she she's with she's the liaison of the park. So I um, want her to speak a little bit more about this if she would. So I really just want council to really take the time to review everything, 
And what I was hoping to get from actually ease is maybe um, some contact information. So if council comes up with some questions that we can email them and maybe add this onto the agenda in the future again, um, because you know, this is, they're asking for a piece of our property um, to put this up. And I think that um, they're gonna do fundraising um, so like one of the questions like I would have is if they're going to be doing fundraising, like, are they like a licensed charity? Because I think that they're going to have to be licensed to be able to do fundraising to purchase something to put in our parks. I think that'd probably be the more appropriate way of going around doing it. Um, if they're, you know, they'd actually have to be a charity, I have like a 403 C, um, and you know, things like that. And also if, you know, they might be interested in reaching out to the arts commission to see, um, you know, when it comes to the actual culture, culture uh, sculpture, to um, make sure it's kind of, you know, to work with them because they are the ones that we kind of put our arts, you know, in the hands of in the city for their recommendations. So I think reaching out to them also would be important. Um, I don't know if any other council members would have anything or any questions for them. Oh, probably in addition to what you said, I just want to say again, thank you for putting this together and those members who are a part of this and I'm seeing the need and putting pushing it forward. So again, thank you for your efforts. Council, did you want to say anything? I know this is just a discussion. So um, if council doesn't want to say anything, we can move forward to the next item. Yeah, I was just, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Councilman DeMonaco. Well, I just saw Mr. Curley raising his hand. That was all. Uh, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Councilman uh, Curley, thank you. Councilman you're, Curley? You're muted, uh, Harvey. Councilman Curley? Yes, thank you. I, I, thank you. I just think everybody on the council and administration are overwhelmed with anticipation for this to happen. And uh, uh, I would hope that this gets back on our agenda real soon so we can take an official vote on it and give them as much support uh, as we possibly can. And that includes financial too, council members. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Councilman, yeah, your, Councilman Baker. Oops. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I just uh, wanted to say that I thought it was a good idea as well. Um, as I read through uh, the agenda, I, I'm very much in agreement with um, this idea. So I, I thank the members of EASE for, for putting this together. I think it's excellent. Okay, sounds good. Madam um, Mayor, if I could interrupt. Usually we don't, we, usually we don't do that, Mr. Sasek, but since she's such a big part of the, uh, we usually don't um, do all that, but since she's such a big part of our, um, and do so much work, please, we're honored to hear what you have to say. Well, as chairman of the Parks Commission, as, as Mayor Pro Tem Lacido mentioned, at our August 12th meeting, they did present their proposal. Mm -hmm. And um, they're not looking for a huge piece of property. It is in Kennedy Field, uh, Kennedy Park, I'm sorry. And it would be just east of the gazebo and north of Stevens Avenue. And John DeHunt is willing to discuss more of the proposal that was presented to the uh, council tonight, just to give you a better idea of what this project is going to look like. And uh, that night, the Parks Commission did unanimously approve bringing it before council. What they're really looking for tonight is permission to be able to plan on using that piece of property so that this monument can start being worked on because we do have to start on fundraising and everything else as soon as possible. So if you have any questions, John DeHunt would be a good resource to go to. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for what you do. Do we have, um, Mr. DeHunt, do you have a couple minutes? I Are do. you there? I do. Yes, please. So this has been a labor of love between a number of us over the last three, four months started with a discussion uh you know it's it seemed to start it really ramped up with mr floyd's passing uh but more to the point it's just there's such an ugliness in the world right now uh if there's something that people can be bigoted about it seems like they're being bigoted about it i mean only in this country we're, we're even creating bigots for political viewpoints so 
it's, it's, this is such an important thing. So we have engaged an artist uh, and we have a tentative dollar amount that it's gonna cost us for this sculpture. sculpture. And it is roughly $30,000, give or take. Uh, that doesn't even include what we are proposing to do for a little bit of a landscape architecture to place this in. Uh, and you should have, I believe in your packets, what we're doing. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Fairbrother has the most recent image that the artist has created for us. If he does, I would appreciate it if he would share it. Uh, if not, I can certainly send it uh, via email to council. Um, so our group is, there are going to be many, there are going to be many mechanisms for fundraising. And so uh, Councilperson Lacido's point about uh, if we need to have a 5013C, we are, we are aware of that. Um, we're not looking to make this into a huge, massive, uh, complicated mi mission. Uh, we understand that there are certain legal aspects that we need to follow and we're going to do that. We're going to dot the I's and we're going to cross the T's. But I, honestly, I, I, short of having an approval for land, I don't really want, I, I want this to be about the people. I sh let me take that back. Shouldn't say I. It's about the people. At the end of the day, it's about the people. It's about the people that we hope to pull into our group and say, we've had enough. This is what real community is. We don't look at color, we don't look at religious background, we don't look at sexual orientation, we look at equality. Um, so that is the whole crux of this. Uh, there are a lot of I's to dot and T's to cross, but what we were looking for or hoping for tonight is an affirmation that you're all on board. And we're not asking city for money. If the city wants to contribute some money, God bless. Uh, but we're not asking you for a penny. We're just asking for the approval to use land on the park. And we will go out and we will do the heavy lifting. We'll get our tin cups and hit the streets. Uh, but we're ready to dig in and do what it needs to do what needs to be done. Um, Mary, did I miss anything? Um, I don't think so. I think one of the things that we have to be concerned with is the fact that um, right at this moment, we have um, an artist who's willing to work with us and he's committed to doing the project because of the symbolism that entails for him. And we really want this to be about uh, an embracement and welcoming of to all to East Point because this is supposed to be a family town and we want that monument to be representative of being a family town, uh, embracing everyone who comes in. Sounds good. Thank you all who put this together. Again, I agree with um, Ms. Lucido on, I, I agree with what you said about them getting um, together with the uh, Arts Commission on this, since the, you know they do so much with art and then also the Planning Commission, maybe they can do some type of dual meeting or something like that and um, get back to us, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, just real quick too, I mean, I, I think it's a fantastic idea. I mm -hmm. think it's great. I mean, anyone that wants to show you know, any sort of community um, pride or effort and improve our community or add to our community or add to our parks. I, I would support all of that. Um, I do think that maybe um, just to make sure before we turn around and approve them actually putting it in the park, I would like to maybe get a recommendation from administration also um, on what their opinion is on it um, and then add it to our next agenda for a possible motion um, if we want to approve for them to put it up in Kennedy Park or not. Yeah, and again, I would like them to actually work with the Arts Commission on that as well. And I know we partnered up with the DIA, so um, that would be good too for the, the, EASE, the EASE group out there. Hopefully you guys can partner up with the Arts Commission and also the DIA, and we might be able to get in the um, Anton Art Center that's in Macomb to get the funding to pay for this project. They have a lot of funding and grants, and um, if we can get the grant and things like that, I'm for it. And I just want to say good job. Council, did you want to say anything else concerning this matter? Uh, just, Madam Mayor, just, just, no. to say, uh, just to say that uh, 
Uh, I'm excited about that. In fact, I, I may go out there tomorrow with stakes and stake off, a, stake off some property for you. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Councilman Demonco, did you want to say something real quick? I think I heard. Sure, you. I was just curious. We met, of course, Miss Mary, Mr. John, and Miss Shelley on the committee. You said there were six of you. I didn't know if any of the other members were on. Um, if they could say hello, if they were on the meeting here. God bless everybody. Hey, Cardi, how are you? And, and Madam Mayor and, and Council. How are Robert you? Rousseau. Thank you for being a part of this. Anybody else? Gary's being quiet, but Gary's part of us too. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you all for what you do and keep it up. Um, we're gonna move along to the bid award for the mobile column lift, council. Madam, Madam Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, before I make the motion, I just wanna say that um, if anybody knows me, they know that in order for me to change the light bulb, I have to turn the electricity off. That's how inept I am. But I appreciate the fact that we've got I don't know, maybe 40 different pictures of, of this um, item. So I don't need any more, I don't need any more information, but I'm just gonna make the motion and we'll move on with it. Uh, I would move to award the bid to the Equipment Distributor Incorporated to deliver a mobile column lift Mohawk model DC MP-18-630, four columns at 68,000 pounds capacity for a total cost of $55,843. Support. Any conversation on this, Council? Just one quick comment. I think I was just happy to see the analysis of it also in here. Yeah. You know, they uh, analyze each of the four bids, and I'm. this, of course, is something uh, we should be happy to pay more for, as it's, of course, a very dangerous um, thing you're doing when you're using this equipment. So... Amen. Appreciate all that information, kind of like Mr. Uh, Curley yep. said. Thank you. Moved and supported. Please call the roll. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Next item is changes to administrative rules and regulations. Council? Uh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Blum. I, I was going to give some explanation on some of these, unless you guys just want to go ahead and approve it. I, Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion. Yes, ma'am. I'll motion is resolved that East Point City Council approves amendments to section 6.2, 7.2, and 8.2 of administrative rules and regulations as attached. Support. Move to support. Any questions, Council? Sure, Madam Seeing Mayor. none. Oh. None, none, sir. <laughs> sorry. Like, so is. Is this proposal coming from then you, Ms. Doom, and Mr. Blum? I mean, I read through it, but uh, I was just curious how this how this came about. Then um, it was it's lining up the admin rules and regs with the uh, various union contracts that were approved back in June. Um, just cleaning up some language and, and getting everybody synced up. Um, just trying to make the non-union equitable with the the unions. Okay. Yeah, I just, I, I guess the only comment probably I have is just, I'm, I'm never really a fan of turning sick time in for uh, money, and I think I've brought that probably up in the past and probably even before December, but I used a ton of uh, sick time back in December, um, and I, I think it just uh, promotes p possibly people coming to work sick and things like that, but it did seem like it was somewhat limited in there, so Yes, it was actually half of what the unions got. I made sure it wasn't as much for a non-union, mainly because it's turned in on an hourly rate basis and non-union makes a little bit more per hour. Mm -hmm. So it, it keeps the cost of the city down. Okay, appreciate it, Mr. Blum, thanks. Any other questions? Please call the roll. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Next item is approval of the budget amendment BA 21-01. Mr. Blum, did you want to speak on this? Um, yes. It, um, this is updating the uh, current fiscal year budget for all of the various union contracts previously approved, but they were approved 
after the budget had been prepared, as well as any of the uh, last fiscal year capital projects that had been budgeted but not completed by June 30th. Uh, we had a lot more than usual thanks to COVID. Um, and that's, that's pretty much all that's, that's in here is, is union updates and unspent uh, capital funds. And if you have any specific questions, I, I will field them at this point. Council? I had a quick question. What was our um, surplus or, uh, you know, how, what's the general fund look like after all this? Then it looked like the rest of the bills were kind of coming to a close in the check register here. Um, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm working on finalizing everything for audit. It appears the general fund will have a surplus of over a million dollars this year in spite of everything that happened. Oh, okay. um, between unspent capital and some unfilled um, staffing positions. And actually the impact of state revenue share reductions have not been as, we had a bigger impact from court fines and fees than we did from revenue share. Okay. So we, we, we're holding our own. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sounds good. Any other questions for our Mr. Blum, our finance director on this issue? Saying none, um, did we have a motion in support on this? No, but I'll motion that we uh, approve the budget amendment BA 21-01 as presented. Support. Support. Moved and supported. Please call the roll. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Lacido? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes, the next item is the schedule of the fiscal year 20 audit meeting. Council? Sure, Mayor, I'll uh, motion we set the meeting for Tuesday, December 1st at 6 p.m. for purposes of reviewing the audit for fiscal year ended June 30, 2020. Support. Support. Moved and supported, please call the roll. Council person DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Lucido. Yes. Mayor Owens. Yes. Councilperson Baker. Yes. Councilperson Curley. Yes. The next item is discussion on policy for appointments and reappointments to boards and commission. That was brought up by Councilman DeMonico. So I'm going to give you the floor, Mr. De Councilman DeMonico. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I just thought that we could bring this up so we could talk about uh, more efficient way and um, of doing board appointments and reappointments. Uh, just curious if any council members were thinking about certain topics and uh, I'd be interested if anyone did have any. I have a couple, but I was interested to hear what everyone else had to say so that we can uh, just uh, go through this in a, in a better way. Uh, Madam Councilman Curley. Thank you. Uh, I, I think probably if I wanted to change it, and probably wouldn't be a bad idea, when somebody has a suggestion for an appointment, and the way we do it now, they bring it up at right at the council meeting, and you know they say I want to appoint Harvey Curley to the beautification committee. Well, I don't know who Harvey Curley is, uh, so I just think it would be nice that if we had uh, in advance some little history on Harvey Curley. Uh, where he lives, how long he's lived in East Point, what his background is. Uh, and even if he, Harvey Curley wanted to come to the council meeting and introduce himself, that would even be nice. But to, to vote on somebody that we don't know from Adam, uh, it sometimes gets a little uncomfortable. Understood. Councilman, Demi um, anyone else? Yes, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, well, one thing um, also, and I'm, uh, Councilman Curley kind of touched on this a little bit, but maybe on like our applications, encouraging residents when they apply, you know, sometimes they apply for multiple boards, like they're not picky, they just want to like, you know, be part of the city, but having, you know, asking them to attend a council meeting, introduce themselves. So like he said, so we can, know, we know who these people are and we have met them before when they do apply to join a board or commission, just so, you know, we can at least familiarize ourselves with them. If we have questions for them, then at that time, we can always, you know, reach out to them. But 
I think this, you know, getting to know them, sometimes it make it easier to, to make our decision when we are choosing people to fill those positions. Understood. Council, um, anyone else? Councilman DeMonaco, you have the floor. Sure. Thank you, Councilman Curley and Mayor Pro Tem Lucido. Uh, I think, yeah, those are definitely great ideas. I, and I think the, the only other one maybe then that I would propose is just, and, and I'd like to, I guess, get feedback, just some sort of possibly some sort of term limits maybe even on boards or commissions in terms of maybe like two full terms. It could be like maybe three altogether if you were first started on uh, like a partial term. Sometimes, you know, you're, you're appointed to fill the rest of a term when someone, you know, moves out of the city or whatnot and can't do it any longer. But maybe just like then you have to come off the board just for a term and then you could be reappointed to it if you still are interested. But just to kind of mix it up a bit, I don't know if anyone was interested in something like that. And I guess just um, in terms of what we're saying here about having the names on the, you know, in the agenda packet, I'd say on Friday or the, um, you know, coming to a meeting before their names in a packet. I don't know if maybe we'd be interested in modifying the ordinance about boards and commissions and we could put some of these items in there so, um, so that we do follow them all, you know, through the future. Sounds good. Well, good Thank ideas. God. Um, uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, no, yeah, thank I you. think that uh, just having a little more information ahead of time is is very helpful. I mean, that way we're not making a rush decision or uh, a decision um, without as much information as we could possibly have. And I think that's just being fair. I think it's being fair to ourselves and basically fair to all the applicants as well. So I would be in, uh, in agreement with that as well. Thank you, Councilman Baker. Understood. Madam Mayor, may I? Yes, ma'am. Um, I mean, I agree. I think that, like Mr. Monaco said, like having the names in our packet on the Friday before, like we could just submit the names beforehand on who we're considering. I think that's um, a really good idea. I don't know if term limits I would necessarily agree to, only because I know since I've been on council, there has been times when we came to filling positions that we don't have any applicants to fill the positions. And so some of those members at that time was a term limited out, that commission would no longer have been meeting because they would have not had quorums. So I, I don't, as much as I encourage to have new people on commissions and on boards, um, and I do support that, um, I don't know what term limits only because of that issue. Um, on the term limits, I do absolutely agree with Councilman DeMonaco because um, when we don't have term limits like we did the last uh, reappointment, we had people that have been on those boards for many years and it discouraged a lot of residents who are trying to get involved. And that might be a reason why we don't have people applying because we keep choosing the same people. And so we don't we want people who live here, um, who's been here for, for many years and new people who just moved here to have a chance. And since we don't have term limits, they haven't had that chance, um, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. So, um, Councilman <coughs> Baker. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Um, I think if we do that, though, we have to be careful because you have people that are doing the hard work getting a lot of these commissions off the ground. So, you know, on one hand, I mean, I understand trying to get versatility in these commissions and everything, but, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, my personal feeling is that you don't push somebody aside or remove somebody who's done the grunt work and, and getting these commissions going, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I think everybody has opportunity to apply for other commissions, even if you're currently serving on one. So that's just my personal feeling about it. Um, and I think that when we look at some of these commissions, that's what we see is that people who are still serving are the ones that help get it off the ground and really push it forward. So. Agree. I agree with a lot of what you said. But again, even with all things that we do, there are limits to uh, serving in community and you can still assist in giving other people a chance. I believe in giving people chances and, and, all, and just seeing what people can do. If you don't give people chances, then it's gonna discourage others. And the people that have been serving on this, these boards and starting these um, commissions and um, doing so much, we, you know, so many times we, we uh, give them the kudos and thanks a lot, but at the same time, we have to pass the torch and give that information and knowledge to other people who want to be a help. And um, I believe that the term limits will help do that. 
Yeah. Uh, Mr. Just, Councilman, just to, I'm, I'm sorry, Councilman I'm sorry. Baker, I'm, you're no, still just on. To Yeah, just to respond, I mean, because I've had a discussion with people and, mm -hmm. you know, you can look at any job, you can look at council and the mayor's seat is the, the same, in the same vein. And, you know, that's kind of setting a standard for boards and commissions, but then we wouldn't hold ourselves to that same standard because like say for instance, if you've been on council for three terms or four terms or whatever, uh, I don't think that you necessarily have to move aside just so someone else can do it. Um, so I think that if we put that standard on boards and commissions, we then we got to hold that same standard to ourselves. So I think we need to really be just sure about how we go forward. Absolutely. So that's all I'm done. I have nothing else. No, I think everything you said was some good points. I agree to a lot of things you said. But again, mm -hmm. um, even in my in my role, you know, just getting someone ready to um, be able to take my place, and you know, because you always have to have somebody come behind you in all that we do. I'm not going to be here forever. I'm going to get older. I might, you know, uh, do something else later on. But I have to pass on the torch and teach somebody behind me. And that's why a lot of times, you know, me and the uh, mayor pro tem, we get together and, you know, um, we help each other with a lot of stuff. You know, I wasn't given the opportunity when I got in this seat to have somebody hand the torch to me and tell me how to run things. I had to learn a lot of things on my own. So in that sense, we want to make sure that uh, a lot of people sometimes move out of East Point who's on these commissions or, or whatever they might do. We want to make sure that they get that knowledge and information for our new families who's moving here. So they can continue to keep East Point going. Uh, I think we had Councilman Curley Thank wanted to say much. something. That's okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, you know, ter term limits uh, has been in a discussion for for a long, long time, all the way from the Supreme Court. Uh, while the Supreme Court should have term limits, uh, uh, all the way down to all the way down to council people. So uh, I'd have to take a really strong look at. Uh, term limits for people on commissions. Uh, okay. We've all we've all experienced people on commissions, whatever, whichever one they are, to be incredibly uh, knowledgeable and incredibly dedicated to this city, uh, that they love this city so much that they're willing to take the time to to serve term after term. So uh, that that's going to deserve a very long discussion, I think. Um, but I'm glad uh, I'm glad you brought it up, Cardi, um, because these term limits uh, are important. And uh, should council have term limits? I don't I don't know. Um, you know, uh, we're talking about it now. We're talking about ourselves. We say, well, we're, we're going to put term limits on ourselves, uh, and what would that be? I don't know. But uh, I think Rob brought a good point. Uh, if we're going to insist upon term limits for somebody on the beautification commission. Or parks and recreation. What about ourselves? Gosh, I've been here 12. I've been here 16 years, and I plan on being here another 16 years. Well, wait a minute. You're just going to kick Harvey Curley off parks and recreation, and he's been here for eight years, but you want to give somebody else a chance. Well, you know, it's going to be an interesting discussion when, when and if we ever bring it back. Well, I value. I'm sorry, sir. Well, I value all of your uh, comments um, since Mr. DeMonico uh, brought this up. Um, are you done with this topic or you want to add some more, Councilman? I, I think we're done. <laughs> um, Council, thank you. Councilman DeMonico. Sure, no, I think, I think that was some good conversation. Uh, I think maybe just something to think about for a while and we could bring it back up at some point then for potentially uh, some sort of motion. Thank you so much for bringing this up. And again, everyone who is currently on a commission in East Point, we thank you and value your hard work and service and dedication to um, the residents of East Point and the city of East Point. Thank you so much. Going to our next item is the memorandum of understanding. Um, who wants to take this? Is it Mr. Fairbrother? Because I know you are um, the speaker or our city attorney. Yeah, absolutely, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor and members of council, as you may recall from the last meeting, I had mentioned that I believe that we were going to receive a grant worth approximately ten to fifteen thousand dollars to have Miss Grace Ramsey help serve as our voter education coordinator to help educate our voters, our council, 
and our election precinct workers on ranked choice voting and how the process of ranked choice voting is going to work for our upcoming November 3rd city council election. This here enclosed is a, a contract between, I believe it's called the Protus Fund and the city of East Point. And I respectfully request city council today to approve the contract so that we can execute it tomorrow and get started. Council, any questions on this? A motion we authorize city administration to enter into an agreement with Proteus Fund, a 501c3 organization on behalf of Democracy Rising for the purpose of the East Point City Council ranked choice voting elections scheduled to be held on November 3rd, 2020. Mr. Fairbrother, I had a, yeah, support. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. Fairbrother, now this grant that we're going to be talking about on the last item, is this grant going to cover this money? So oh, they are, just so you know, Madam Mayor, they are two separate agreements, two separate grants. Um, this one is, okay. um, even though they are two separate grants, they will both be used in conjunction to help okay, so educate our okay. voters and our, our electorate, as well as members of council, um, my staff, and the election precinct workers. Okay, what kind of ideas have you had? Give me one or two ideas and we can go to the next item. Oh, we've, we've got tons of ideas, Madam Mayor. Um, one of them, uh, one of the fun ideas is we are going to, to again, reinvent our website, voteeastpoint.com. Mm -hmm. um, another fun idea is that uh, actually in the next grant you're going to learn about is that we, uh, they are offering to buy all of the city of East Point, all of the, the workers here in City Hall and across our entire enterprise t-shirts mm -hmm. um, that we're going to advertise East Point votes on. Um, there's going to be a lot of fun stuff that is... Uh, that's going to be encouraging our residents to vote, to get out and vote. And uh, and I look forward to it. It's, it's gonna be a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Yeah, and if you need to use the previous people that ran, um, they were the first people that, you know, were part of the ranked choice voting. I believe it was, um, Ms. Lucido was a part of it. Also, uh, Ms. Rafford, Ms. Hall Rafford, you know, if you wanna use them in assistance, you know, you know, they have, uh, so much information on that as well. So if we can use the people that first was a part of it and help, you know, let's do so with that. Thank you. The next item, I'm sorry, let's go with the, we have motion and support. Let's do the um, roll, please. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. I believe the seconder was Councilperson Baker? Yes, yep. Councilperson yep. Curley? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes, the next item is discussion on social media. This was brought up by Councilman DeMonico, so I'm going to give him the floor. Councilman? Sure, thanks, Mayor. Yeah, just this was the, well, let's see, let me back up here. So back in April, we, we just had talked uh, briefly about social media and about the city's website, and we just decided that if there was any individual council member item that any anyone wanted to put on the website or on the Facebook, it had to be run by the rest of council. And we just did not seem to follow that policy um, on Friday um, when uh, uh, Madam Mayor, you asked the city to put this event you did at Mr. Dre's barbershop on the Facebook page. Uh, this was just, you know, an event that you put together um, so we're just not, we're not following our own motion. And I just wanted to bring this up so that we could be on the same page again. And, you know, I don't think that that um, should have been posted on there. That was a motion um, on that. You said, well, um, again, it was not, I wasn't following. It was something that was needed. So in accordance to that, 9-11, we didn't have anything for our officers and show appreciation to it, to them. And so I would not apologize for doing something for our first responders and those who lost their life on 9-11. So I will not do that. Now moving forward, yes, you're absolutely right. But since we didn't have anything in place to show our appreciation to, to those that give their life every day and who are losing their life currently through what's going on, I would not apologize for that. But I agree with you. We do need to follow our, our policies and I always do that. But I thought this was a need to do that at this time. And if I had to do it again, I would. 
Well, Madam Mayor, I mean, this, uh, this event, um, first of all, well, first of all, so we had this motion, it's not being followed. If the city was throwing it, we would have had it on our own city property. This was held at just a business in the city. There were, you know, free donuts or free food or something, I believe the flyer said. We're, this is, it's, it's not a city event at that point. I think the flyer just said, um, you know, East Point Mayor Monique Owens and it's uh, first responder appreciation, but it used stock photos. It wasn't even pictures of East Point first responders. It it wasn't it wasn't a city event. That that's the point, though. Uh, it, it should not have been on the East Point pages. Of course, uh, if we do something as a city and honor our first responders, we definitely should do that as often as we can. Of course, 9/11 is a very good time to do that but we had not put that together as a city. The city runs the executive branch of the government. They should be posting on the page. This was inappropriate. I mean, it. you didn't invite, I mean, I didn't get invited. I don't know if anyone else, uh, I guess, got in, invited. I didn't even know about it until I saw it on the pages either. I mean, to be frank, it's a campaign event. It's not a city event. This was not a, a city event. Madam Mayor, may I? Yes, ma'am. Um, I mean, I know that like, I think me and the rest of council would definitely, if it was something in the future that you were interested in doing, um, having some sort of event for first responders on 9-11 or, you know, around 9-11. Um, I think that that would be a great idea, but I do understand where Mr. DeMonica is coming from because it's also kind of advertising for like a personal business in the city, even though I know what they were doing, they, they were just, you know, offering donuts and coffee, but it is advertisement also for that business. And we can't become like this advertising chain for, you know, all the different businesses in the city. And every time this business holds this event, or if they're having a sale, I'll be posting them, you know, on our Facebook or on our social media pages. So I do understand where, where Mr. DeMonico is coming from with that. And so do I, I agree with both of you. But again, this is not advertising the business. This is advertising the appreciation of officers. And again, I do not apologize. Anything else on this discussion? Well, I think since this was brought up earlier too, the um, in the uh, hearing of the public, the use of our police department, it sounds like at this event on Thursday, the police were called on a resident that was just attending an event in the city. I don't understand what was uh, uh, what was going on here. I, I think that needs to be addressed uh, also. By whom? Well, it's not, I mean, Madam Mayor, didn't, it sounds like you, you call someone not it's related. It's not on the agenda and I don't have to address that. If you want more information, you can talk to the people that were involved, which was the police department, Director Roheeb, you can contact him personally and find out everybody that gets um, asked to leave a, a property, we will not address that at every council meeting. We will right, not. Well, I want to make it clear we shouldn't, we can't, council people shouldn't be using the police department to remove people from events. And I'm not sure how that even happened. The, the police department should also not be doing that. I don't know why all this occurred at, at that event. And since you don't know, then do you want to continue to go to the next item on the agenda, sir? Uh, sure, why not? What do we got? Uh, well, we've got the one we added to the agenda here. We've got, uh, right, the election administration grant. Sure, Mr. Uh, Fairbrother, if you wanted to talk about that. Mr. Fairbrother, please. Thank you. Yes, Madam Mayor and members of council, um, at the recommendation of mayor and council, I've been applying for as many grants as humanly possible. Um, I'm delighted to say that the Center for Tech and Civic Life has decided to extend the City of East Point Clerk's Office a grant for two hundred and fourth, just over two hundred and four thousand um, dollars, as a result um, of the Zuckerberg Chang um, donation recently. Um, this grant will be used for many things, including ensuring safe election day voting, expanding voting education and outreach efforts. And launching poll worker, worker recruitment and training. Um, so I'm delighted to bring this before council. 
Um, I'm also requesting permission to expend these funds as time is of the essence. And um, it's, it's, we are going to move very, very quickly here in the next six weeks prior to this election. So, thank you. And uh, hopefully the city council will accept this grant. Um, city council? Carol, Any a questions? motion we accept that grant from the Center for Tech and Civic Life for $204,756 for the purchase of planning and operationalizing safe and secure election administration in the city of East Point. Further authorize city administration to expend the funds in accordance with the safe voting plan application. I think it all looks great, Brian. Thanks. Support. 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 Motion supported. Thank you. Uh, again, thank you, Mr. Fairbrother. We got motion and support. Please call the roll. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Yeah. And Mayor Owens? Yes, thank you. Next item is payroll and bills. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to pay the bills in the amount of $2,863,167.78. Support. Move to support it. Any questions on this, Council? Madam Mayor, I got one quick question. Yes, sir. Um, um, Mr. Blum, it looked like uh, some of those state of Michigan projects that we were paying for seem pretty old. Um, sorry, I don't have the number next to me, but we paid them for like the Topher project, Boulder to David, you know, those, shouldn't we have already, uh, that's in this current fiscal year, some of those projects were done long ago. <laughs> uh, you're uh, muted, uh, Randy. There we go. Uh, yeah, the state generally takes about 18 months to close out any project. Um, so we end up getting a final bill um, when, when they do that. It just depends on how long it takes them. Uh, it's not unusual that it's uh, a couple fiscal years after the project was completed. Okay. I, I don't know specifically how much TOFR was, but it was uh, a minimal amount compared to the total bill there. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions, Council? We have motion and support. Please call the roll, please. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. Councilperson Curley? Yes. And Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Thank you. The next item is the hearing of the public. This is the second hearing of the public. Mr. Fairbrother, you can open it up, please. Again, you get three minutes. Please uh, state your name and residency. All right, residents of East Point, hearing of the public is now open. If you wish to speak to the mayor and council tonight, I ask that you raise your electronic hand. I can see, Madam Mayor, that there are already a few people raising their hand. The first one on the list is Stephen Salas Savag. I apologize if I butchered your name. Um, Stephen, if you can hear us, the floor is now yours. Good evening. Yeah, I, uh, Hello? I'll make it real quick. Uh, Stephen Sosavich, uh, 30 year resident of East Point. I've uh, always lived here. I would just like to make a comment on something I heard in the meeting and it came up a few times that this thing about the police called to a city event that uh, I do agree with Cardi. I, I, I feel that this is something I think that the city should discuss a little bit more and the public should know, I mean, what happened? I mean, if the resident was in the wrong, we should get all the information. If the resident wasn't in the wrong or in, in you know, we should also get the information. So I, regardless of what the outcome is, I do feel that the residents need to know what happened within the situation, regardless if, uh, you know, whatever they claim the reason was that this happened. But it, it should be investigated. Things like that shouldn't happen in, in the first place. And when it does, I, I, I feel that when a council member asks for it to be looked in, that it shouldn't just be brushed off. I, I really think that it should be looked into because that's a serious accusation against our mayor because the woman's comment was she felt that the mayor did it for a race reason. And that's, that's a, a, I think, a serious accusation that I didn't think was brought up often enough 
in this meeting that I don't know about you, but if I were to be called racist and I'm not, I would, would, would want a chance to defend myself, but I'd also, you know, want the proper facts to be out there also. So I just would like to end it at that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next person on the hearing of the public that would like to speak. Madam Thank Mayor, Miss Mary Hall Rayford is the next one on the list. Ms. Hall Rayford, if you can hear us, the floor is now yours. Thank you. Um, it, it, yeah, it's been a very interesting evening. But what I'd really like to comment on uh, what uh, Stephen said before you, uh, rather before me, th this seems to be the second time that I've heard about um, police being called on citizens for no apparent reason other than a personal issue. That's really disturbing to me. And I think that's something that should not happen unless someone is, um, you know, uh, threatening physical harm or whatever. But simply because a person dislikes someone doesn't mean that a police should be called. So we, we've got a problem here. We need to resolve it before it explodes into something that nobody in the city, I'm sure, wants to hear on the media. So I would ask everyone on the council, uh, how do we address this? Is this an ethics board situation? Is it a legal situation exactly? What is it and how do we resolve it to keep it from going any further? Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to the next one, please. Madam Mayor Sheila, Ulinski is the next individual who is on the list. Uh, yes, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. I just wanted to touch lightly upon the discussion of term limits on the commissions. And my point of view would be, I don't think someone who's been on a commission for more than whatever you're going to set as a term limit should be not accepted back onto the commission uh, just because they've been on it. And I don't believe that people do not apply to run for commissions just because long-term people have been on those commissions. People don't run for commissions because they don't want to. They don't need to be strong-armed and they, they, if they wanna do it, they're, they're going to do it. I've been a resident for 26 years. I've been on the planning commission, honestly, for many years and have enjoyed every minute of every year of it. And we work very hard I do nothing, William, in the bottom of the pit. I'm sorry, Miss um, Ulansky, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, and I, I just want to say, you know, don't discount people or remove them simply for the fact that they've been on a commission for a long time. Honestly, if you're on for a long time, I, I think that's a lot of experience. It's a lot to learn. And I do encourage new people to apply for commissions and get involved in the city because you can't make changes without getting involved. That's a motto I've always had and, you know, our commissions do a great job, but please consider the term limits and not accepting people back because they've been on for quite a while. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you for what you did in the um, past on the uh, commission as well. Anyone else, Mr. Fairbrother? Yes, Madam Mayor, Miss um, Alyssa Diebolt would like to speak. Okay, good evening. Hi there, I just wanted to reach out to the community. Um, I'm the chair of the Arts and Cultural Diversity Commission and we have launched our 2020 resident art exhibition where East Point residents 18 and older can submit artwork. Um, in our new normal of world, it will be going digital. The application is done via Google Forms and it's available on our Facebook page, the City of East Point Arts and Cultural Diversity Commission. And we will be taking everyone's um, photographs of all their 3D and 2D artwork and making it into a video to be made available to the public um, in October. Uh, we're really excited about it and want to encourage everyone, whether you consider yourself an artist or not, to get involved in this way because we know that there's a lot of talent here in East Point and we want to be able to highlight it. 
So I'd actually hope that um, the city council members could reach out to some of the folks who have applied to the to ACDC in the past and have not been appointed as chair. I don't have access to the information and maybe encourage them to apply. I think that would be a great first step in these folks to bring them to the table and see if they want to get involved and, um, you know, let's feature their talents too. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for what you do. Anyone else would like to speak? Um, Madam Mayor, at this time, I see no other individuals who would like to speak. Okay. Well, the second hearing of the public is now closed. I want to thank everybody who spoke for your comments Excuse and me, your Mayor. concerns. Excuse, Excuse, me. Excuse me, Mayor. Someone put in the chat that they were trying to speak. I don't know if they knew how to raise their hand. Okay. Um, Mr. Thank you. Mr. Fairbrother, do you see that person? Uh, yeah, they don't have their hand raised, but Mandy, did you want to speak again? Yeah, I wanted to speak again and answer questions from the public that they were questioning about the event at Foot Locker. Well, um, you can't address the, you can't address, just like we would have it at, a count, at well, City so Hall, you can't address the, um, you can't address the people. So again, if anyone has any questions, you can also um, email Ms. Doom. But we don't have any audience members like we would if here, we were inside to address the audience. Would you like to okay, say anything I'll else, Miss? Continue to address you in regards to the foot. No, you can't address. You can't address me again. I said council. Yes, ma'am. You sure can. When you're That's ready, let I me said. know so I can time you. I don't think I stuttered, but I, I said council. I'd like to address you again. In okay, go ahead. Your time now. If anyone would like to see the complete video from four o'clock to five thirty, and the conversations of that video of everything that went on at Foot Locker that day, I would be more than happy to share that with anybody, including the city manager, the attorney. Okay, because yes, I'm thinking racism is is involved. How is this city going to be diverse with this going on at a public event? This Are has done, to stop somewhere. This has to stop somewhere. And it's going to stop somewhere. And for anybody on that council, not to say they apologize for what happened to me, that was devastating to me for what they did because I was not in the wrong. I was more than 50 feet away from this woman when this incident took place all night long and it's gonna stop. And that's all I got to say. Like I said, email me, I'm on Facebook. I have the full whole thing of the video. Thank you, council members. Thank you again. And thank you for always coming to my events and videotaping me to show what I do in the community. I appreciate you. I now the here, second hearing of the public is now closed. Thank you everyone who attended and spoke. And next we're going to go to mayor and council reports. We're going to start with Councilman DeMonico. Thanks. Um, and before I address, I guess, probably the obvious item here, I've seen that uh, Ms. Aaron Hardcastle and Mr. Otis Gatson are on the call. I just wanted to say hello to them <laughs> and thanks for coming out. I think you were both on the, the last uh, city council call too, so. Appreciate it, and uh, one day we'll meet each other in person uh, <laughs> at some point um, when maybe we are not uh, under such a pandemic times. Um, then term limits uh, for the boards and commissions. I guess uh, I should have probably prefaced that a little bit more, everyone. Um, I was just bringing some ideas forward, We've, some because I thought maybe they were good ideas, some because we've talked about them in the past. Um, not looking to, uh, you know, Sheila, I'm not looking to kick you off the planning commission. <laughs> I was just bringing it up to see what everyone thought. And um, it, it was, I was glad to hear what everyone said about that. You know, some commissions, of course, seems like are perpetually unfilled. So yeah, um, having term limits wouldn't make sense. And for other various reasons, and if someone is dedicated to a commission, we wouldn't want to alert, lose a good member. So I think it was good just to, um, just to discuss that. 
And so everyone, again, wear masks. Let's get this pandemic done with. Um, I think it's going to be quite a few more months, but keep wearing masks, social distance, do what you can, you know, keep joining Zoom meetings instead of in-person meetings. And uh, in terms of Zoom meetings, I look forward to one we have later this month. Um, and a couple of you, you know, Ms. Yulinski, Mr. DeHaan, we're meeting with you at the end of the month for a joint planning commission city council meeting. So I'm looking forward to that. So everyone get all your notes ready on that. We'll have McKenna there and Ms. Van Heron. And I, I think that'll be a good discussion to move the 2040 master plan forward. Um, Good to see that Constitution Week is starting uh, this week, as the mayor said earlier with the proclamation. If everyone maybe run through the uh, Constitution again at this point in time, you know, just reread it. It's not a super long document, so uh, read it again. Get yourself familiar with it. And um, I guess then to, well, it's still Brain Aneurysm Awareness Month too. I guess I'll bring that up. So uh, learn a thing or two about that. And then just this, we can go back to this uh, police issue here. Um, from what I am seeing here is, to me, it, the uh, PD is not being used appropriately um, by a council member. Um, this is not the first time that- uh, Well, I will not do Councilman DeMonaco. Well, I, you will not assume and you will not suggest that I did something wrong. You will not do that. You will uh, not, because I can assume a lot about you. And you are doing some things in front of our, our residents that is not right. Now, if you want to have a conversation with me, you should have done that. If you want to have a conversation with the director or Ms. Doom, you can do that. But you will not sit there as a councilman and disrespect me like that, like you did another meeting. You're not going to keep doing that. <laughs> I will not allow it. Because you keep doing it. And I have several residents that say you keep doing it. I, I don't like it, okay? I, I, I don't like it. You will not sit there and assume something I did without asking me and having a conversation. Now, if something happened on a Thursday, as a councilman, you should have called me and emailed me or talked to the director or Ms. Doom. But you will not openly and publicly try to embarrass me and say and assume something that is not true. Yeah, Mayor, I you don't understand me. Uh, no, because uh, okay, I mean, well, if you, you don't understand me, then let's keep moving on. And so you want to have a discussion with me, you know, my number, you know, my email, and you know where the office is. But I will not allow you to disrespect me or any other council member and say something out loud that's not true without having the facts. It's not true. You, you will not want, to, you will not want nobody to do it to you. I will not continually stand and be bullied by you or residents assuming something you cannot ask a mayor. All right, what I will not allow it. And you continuously do it. Now, I if you want to talk to me, you talk to me respectfully, like you want someone to talk to your wife. So you uh, will not keep doing that. Do you understand well, what I'm saying? Speaking so of my wife. We're going to keep moving. We're going to keep moving. She's forward. one of the people you've are called the police department. Are we can, we can, what do you want to do? We're not going to do this. Fine, whatever I'm done, I think it's inappropriate. Let's have the ethics. You don't know what's appropriate. You can say ethics all day. But you have been unethical the last couple meetings and talking to me any kind of way and assuming something. So you're going to be ethical, speak right. You put the board together, act like you got some sense, okay? Because I want to tolerate how you continuously come and bash me and try to bully me. You're not going to do it to me or a council because no one does it to you. So moving along, because this is not how we conduct business here, and I apologize to all that's listening, we're going to continue this. Unless you want something else to say that you know facts about, Mr. DeMonaco, I don't want to cut you off. No, I think we've said enough just now. So Okay, um, well, you know my number, and if you would like to talk to me tomorrow, or you want to get facts, then I will sit and talk with you anytime. I have no problem with that, and I have no problem with talking to anyone else. So Ms. Doom, if he likes to talk to you, then we can do that. I have no problem with talking to council. Mr. Crowley, Councilman Crowley, I know you had a 945 appointment. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, thank so we're going to go you. back to you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, a couple things. I attended uh, the uh, Library Commission meeting tonight. And um, they have a continuing fundraiser of people putting uh, 
bottles and cans in a box out in front of the library and they cash them in and get the money. So I'm asking everyone who's going to be watching this to uh, take their bottles and cans and deposit them and, you know, and don't tell me that you got 10 cans and you want to cash them in yourself. That's a dollar. Come on, get real. Get real. The library is an, an incredible institution in any city. And it's an incredible institution here in East Point. And that money that they raise for that for those bottles and cans can go a long way. They can buy new computers. They can buy new books. And there are so many books coming out right now, as you know. Every week there's a new book coming out. So you want to read that, but you can't if they can't buy it. So so do that. Um, Cardi, the nice thing about council members is that they can have a difference of opinion. And my opinion about the upcoming planning commission meeting is this. Uh, there are tw there will be um, seven members from the planning commission, five members from the council, plus three or four other people. So we're looking at 15 or 16 people trying on Zoom, trying to get the attention of whoever's going to lead that thing. And I don't think it's working. So I would, I would ask the council, and, and perhaps I might even ask to put it on the agenda at our next meeting, to um, wait until such time that we can actually be in the same room and talking to each other, eyeballing one, one another, seeing your facial expression, and raising your hand when you want to be recognized. So I really am not excited about having a Zoom meeting with 16 or 17 or are 18 people. Um, so that's so that's that. Um, I'm frustrated in one thing, uh, folks, and let me tell you, and there's no there's no solution right now, but you know, we get so many calls and so many emails about people saying, why aren't you doing somebody about something about these people speeding down my street? Well, let me tell you right now. Right now, 100%, our police are doing an incredible job. They are writing a lot of tickets for people speeding down residential streets. They really are. So I don't want to hear any more say, what are, where is the policeman? Well, this is a big city when you've got two or three cars out there. Uh, and I don't know what the solution can be. We have these two cars that live down the street that speed by my house. I don't know how fast they go. Uh, you know, I don't have a gun to find out what speed they are, but... I can believe it's probably 50 miles an hour. So solution number one, put speed bumps on. Well, where do I put a speed bump? Between Stevens and Forrest or Forrest and Haas or Haas and 10 Mile Road? I mean, how many speed bumps can I put up? Is that going to help? I don't know. Uh, and they would have to come up in the wintertime because of shoveling the snow, right? Of course. Secondly, do I put a, a yield sign? Well, the yield sign isn't going to do any good. The third option that we could talk about and to, to take a look, and I wish the police chief was here. I don't see his name on there, but a stop sign, a four-way stop for the entire city. We've got to think about something, guys, to stop the speeders. I've got so many young kids right across the street. I've got seven young young kids, young tots, that someday they're going to... I'm getting excited, so forgive me, but someday... Something's going to happen. Somebody said, well, Harvey, walk down the street. You know where that guy lives. Uh, knock on the door. I said, yeah, right. I'm going to go down. One elderly guy is going to go down with a mask on, knock on his door, and tell the guy he's speeding and going too fast. I don't know what's going to happen. I'll be honest with you. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to do that. One solution somebody said you could do, and that's why I was hoping that the chief was here, but I'll call him tomorrow. Um, you can go down. Take a picture of his license plate and give it to the police. This happened in another city, too, and I think it might have been Roseville or Warren. Uh, the police came, knocked on the door, and said that uh, we, have, uh, we have calls that you've been speeding down the street. Uh, we're going to be watching you. Maybe we can do that, too. But, folks, I'm tired of, I'm tired of you writing on, on the computer that it's the police fault. It's not their fault. It's our society, and we've got to find a, a better way to do it. And I don't have an answer, but I'm really frustrated about it. So, as I ended the last couple of meetings, we talk about love, and with what's going on in the country, 
Um, love might be the only answer. So let me give you a couple of things. Um, it used to be Mother Teresa, right? And now it's Saint Teresa. She once said that love is not something you do. Love is something you say. St. Francis once said, preach the gospel always, but when necessary, use words. Do you understand what he said? And love isn't love unless you give it away. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councilman Curley. We're going to go to Councilman Baker. Um, well, just thank you everybody for attending. I'm not going to belabor anybody. Um, we have Gleaners this Thursday at 930. It's at the middle school. Uh, they were doing it at the high school for a short period of time while there was construction, but it is now back at the middle school on 10 Mile and Kelly. And that will be at 930. Uh, line up early uh, to make sure you get something to help either your family or someone you know in need. Uh, and that is pretty much all I have. I want to tell everybody that, you know, we're still going through some funny times in the world. <clears throat> a lot of things going on all across the world. Uh, just be kind to one another, show love to one another, be peaceable to one another, and give respect to, to everyone. Um, that is the easiest thing you can do, and it is free of charge. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mayor Pro Tem, Lucido. First, I would like to uh, start out by thanking everyone who joined our meeting tonight and to take a moment to thank all of our boards and commissions for all of your hard work. And I don't want you guys to think that any of us, even the ones, you know, even if we talk about term limits or anything, we, we all do definitely appreciate everything you guys do. And we know all the hard work and dedication you put into those. Um, I would like to take a moment to, you know, give my thoughts and prayers to all of the people who are dealing with the wildfires out west and with Hurricane Sally. My sister lives um, in Alabama. She's being affected by the hurricane. They've been getting a lot of rain right now since it hit um, in the morning. So I'm praying for all of them. And I would also like to um, add on our next agenda, speaking of that, um, filling some empty vacant seats on our boards and commissions. So I would like to encourage everyone to put in your applications. We will definitely have some openings. I believe we have, we're gonna have an opening on the, possibly on the Parks Commission. We're gonna have openings on beautification. Um, so definitely put in your um, applications. I, I know beautification for sure definitely has openings. So we are always looking for um, volunteers. So other than that, I think that's all I have this uh, evening, Mayor. Okay, and thank you, ma'am. First of all, I want to uh, thank everyone for attending and all those who attended the hearing of the public. Um, I want to apologize to those listening because this is, you know, going back and forth with council and getting loud and over talking one another and also um, allegedly saying things about another council member. That is not how our city wants to be looked at because people are looking at us. And to say that we are about equality, fairness, and love, we need to start showing it. And it starts with your leadership. So I'm gonna first apologize for not only for myself, but the council member that spoke out loud. And you know, because that's not appropriate. So um, also I wanna thank the Foot Locker and all sponsors for doing a census drive, helping us raise our census, helping us to get out to vote in which information about the ranked choice voting was given out. And I want to thank you to the Macomb County Clerk, uh, Mr. Miller, for coming out and helping us with that. Um, we also packed out backpacks for our community and all the sponsors in our community um, for Blessed Hands, Foot Locker, Enjoy Detroit. Um, it's awesome when you've got communities from outside of East Point, outside of Macomb, still want to see us grow. And I really appreciate that. Even Mr. Dre was a part of that, which he's always a part of um, our community. Um, the last couple of years, he's been giving out free haircuts for police and um, the kids in our community so that those that cannot afford or can't afford haircuts that they can look nice when they are going back to school. Also, since we we're talking about Mr. Dre's Barbershop, again, I wanna thank you for hosting the Appreciation Day for our first responders and also remembers the 9-11. Um, it was something that wasn't planned, but it was needed. And um, any event that I have, um, the last couple uh, meetings, I always invite council, they're always welcome to attend any of these, I would even, I think it'd be more effective if council came so that um, it's seen as a whole event 
no matter who's giving the event or who's hosting the event, this is our city and you have elected us to be a part of our community. And so I feel like that's part of our job as well. I'm also happy to see the increase of new businesses in our city as well. Um, those who already look at my Facebook page strongly and follow me with their phones, they can see that I go to so many different businesses and support them. So I wanna thank uh, the new businesses for investing in East Point and coming to East Point. Also, I wanna thank you to the director in the city of East Point Police and their reserves for making sure our city is safe. Um, we have the bike patrol, I know a lot of people have seen that, and um, the foot, foot patrol. They're doing an amazing job, so keep it up and keep doing your job. Um, also, I want to thank, say a thank you to my mayor pro tem uh, for always assisting me in so many ways so I can better do my job. And also, um, all the directors from the finance director to Ms. Blum, I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Blum, um, you know, Ms. Doom, uh, Mr. Abraham, DPW. Um, everybody who's um, a part of the city, I want to thank you for helping me do my job. And also the residents who always email me with their concerns and keep me abreast of what's going on. I want to say thank you so much for helping me do my job that you elected me to do. And I will do my very best. Um, saying that, moving forward, um, we're going to go to a closed session. And um, then you guys can come back. We're just going to be leaving. So we're going to close session for attorney-client privilege communication. Uh, concerning the marijuana regulations and also the legal information for Brandon Fournier. Um, Council? Oh, Madam Please. Mayor, there's also the uh, the um, legal opinion regarding the Raphael LLC versus Oakland County Supreme Court case. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, Council? Madam Mayor, uh, I, I would move that we would go into closed session for all the reasons you stated. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Move to support it. Please call the roll. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Question. I had a question there, though, before we vote. Um, I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. On the marijuana regulations, uh, Mr. Albright, what um, more specifically, um, I just want to make sure that um, the discussions on topic uh, for the closed session. Uh, yes, there's uh, very specific uh, parameters uh, that I want to discuss. Uh, which were outlined in my email uh, dated uh, August 23rd. Okay, so the, okay. Um, it shouldn't be a very long conversation. Okay. <laughs> okay. Famous last words, I know. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Mr. I got a, bri I got a bridge that. you could buy too, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Uh, Councilman DeMonaco? No. Okay, thank you. I have motion and support. Please call the roll. Councilperson Curley? Yes. Councilperson Lucido? Yes. Councilperson DeMonico? Yes. Councilperson Baker? Yes. Mayor Owens? Yes. We are moving into closed session. If you want to put the uh, participants in another room. We're going to take 10 minutes, right? Madam Mayor? Are we already gone? Mayor Pro Tem, can we take 10 minutes? Five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> 10 minutes. Take, I don't know. Now, do I, do I have to close off? I think she froze. Close? I think, no, you uh, stay on. I think she froze. Yeah. No, uh, me members of council and administration, I will be enabling the waiting room now, which will uh, force all non recognized um, individuals from the closed session. So but you guys don't have to do anything. We're doing, a, we're doing the 10 minutes, so let's be back and look at the time. So I don't have to, Ryan, I don't have to do anything to stay on. Harvey, you just have to sit there. I'm just okay. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Yeah. Sounds good. So let's do um nine twelve. If we are here before that, we can keep it moving, okay? Thank you. Sounds Thank good. you. Thank you everyone again.
Well, Rich. Hi, Elke. I'm, hit, I'm hitting the hard stuff. All right. Is there vodka in there? <laughs> no, unfortunately, it's just orange juice. <laughs> I need my vitamin C after this meeting. Yeah. Love orange juice. Oh, I'm telling you. Are we done yet? Close. <sighs> Well, good night, everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I can't say that yet, huh? No, no, we were. I was just saying that. Are we done yet? No, I know. I know. I, I just chimed back in. I didn't miss that opportunity. I'm prepared. I'm loading up on my orange juice and my vitamin C. You know, I got a feeling this is going to be really quick, closed sessions. I'm uh -huh. feeling it. I'm feeling it. If not, Rob, I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready, buddy. I got my Tropicana. Hey, hey, Randy! Did you get a did you get a note left with the, with that sucker? Oh yes, I did. <laughs> well, and actually, the problem is it threw me because Beth wrote it, so it's a female handwriting. And I'm like, well, who the heck did this come from? <laughs> and then she had to explain it was you. I'm like, okay, all right, that makes sense. <laughs> we can't make it easy, right? You can't make it easy. Oh, never, never. Eat your heart oh, man, out. You say you don't think. Hey, uh, eat your heart out. What's that? Oh, no. We get the mayor pro tem on here and uh, Councilman DeMonica. We can be ready to go. I'm uh, uh, we, We're going to be through this in like, like, like five minutes. minutes. I feel it. You said 10 minutes. It's only been four. <laughs> we're in a hurry. Are what? you eating what? ice cream? <laughs> oh, this chocolate is so, so good. Oh, oh, gee whiz. That's coming over. No, me too. Hey, after party at, at Harvey's house. <laughs> Come on over. I never locked the door. I never locked the door when I was a kid. So I never locked the door now. Really? You pick between three houses. And oh. <laughs> Good for you, Harvey. I'm the exact same way. Yep. Oh. What? Never oh, no. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that'll cost you tomorrow. You oh. better stop by the office and bring me my cup, too. Ice cream. What an idea. <laughs> oh, they're here, Miss Holman. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I feel they're like we're having dessert tonight during our meeting. <laughs> right? I'm telling you. you. Got everybody here. I don't see Councilman um, DeMonico. Is he in? Not yet. Okay. This is, see, this is all I have. This is all I have is, yep. is water, alkaline water. Me too. Oh, what? alkaline. Excuse me. Excuse see, me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 everybody got to step the game up. Yes, you <laughs> But I won't, I won't tell you what was in my big cup during the regular meeting. Oh. Yours, was water, yours was water with a twist. That's all. That's what we'll say. You guys got to that. Yes. With a it's, twist. It's, it's called sangria. 